welcome back to my channel. Can you believe it's that time of the month again? The end of another month. September is over. Ah, but that means that it's October now and that means it's officially fall. Like I think I said this at the end of last month's favorites where I'm like yeah September is officially fall. Well no October is when it's officially fall. Actually I think September 22nd whatever uh it's the end of a month which means i have more products that i've been loving so let's get into it first i'll talk about what's on my lips because i have been loving it i love it do you guys love it i feel like it's so fall but it's still like a nude pretty neutral color love it so much so this is the bare minerals uh, what are these called? Liquid matte lipsticks. They're from the Gen Nude collection. So Bare Minerals came out with a whole line of nude lipsticks. There's actual lipsticks, there's liquid lipsticks, there's lip liners, there's lip glosses. It's just like this whole line of amazing nude colors. And I had to control myself and I only picked up two of them. Um, I featured these in my Ulta haul that I'll link down below for you guys. But the color on my lips right now is the color Juju. And I feel like this is just the most pretty fall color because it has like a little bit of like brownish berry undertone but it's still just like light enough to where I don't feel like I'm super fall yet do you know what I mean on top of that both of these so I also have the color swag and although these are a matte lipstick they do not dry out my lips like not one bit they don't transfer onto my teeth like I don't feel like I have to keep on checking my teeth which is amazing it's a true matte finish and they don't flake like you know how some li liquid lipsticks like flake or they get like crusty or they wear off on the inside of your lips I don't feel like this is doing that so <laughs> I don't know what it is about these on top of that the smell like they smell so good it's almost like a candy corn scent like a maybe like a vanilla chocolate like they kind of taste like candy corn maybe I'm just in like a candy corn state of mind right now oh what is that what just happened? Do you guys see that? That has never happened to me before. Is it melting? Ew. Next up, let's talk about another product that's currently on my face. So that is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Longwear Liquid Foundation. I did another first impressions video all about this that I will link down below for you. Like I wore it throughout the day. I checked in multiple hours throughout the day. And overall, I love this foundation. The one downside is it's not transfer proof. So if you happen to scratch your nose or rub your forehead or when you're applying your setting powder, if you push too hard on your face, it does smear and smudge the product. And then you have to go in with like a beauty blender and fix it. And that's the one downside. But other than that, everything else about this foundation is amazing. It truly is a matte foundation. I am typically a very oily skinned person. And this stayed matte on me all day long. In addition to that, I don't feel like it settles into my fine lines. Like I have some smile lines, I have some under eye wrinkles, and I don't feel like this draws attention to that or sinks into it throughout the day. Like if I can stop talking, I can look. I don't feel like it's settling into my smile lines at all. Overall, I really like it. The packaging is awesome. It has a pump and I've been digging it. Another thing on my face right now is the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara. I don't know if I've talked to you guys about this before. I'm pretty sure I have, but this is like a rediscovered favorite because um, as you guys know, I had lash extensions for a while, which means no mascara. And then once I took those off and I was trying to rediscover what my favorite mascaras were, this is the one that I keep going to. So let me show you up close. Okay, so here I am up close in all my beautiful glory. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't laugh at my wrinkles, but um, those are my natural lashes. I don't have falsies on at all. That is what the Benefit Roller Lash does to my lashes. So on top of being a true deep black color, which I love, they also make it in brown now, which is really cool. Um, the wand is just so perfect. So it's really ugh, dropped it. The wand is really skinny and it has like a banana shape. So you can really get into like that outer corner. You can even go behind the lashes, which I do occasionally and coat them on the other side. You can get on the inner corner, your lower lashes really well. I just love the versatility of the wand and how skinny it is and it doesn't flake throughout the day, which is great. And I have really been digging it. Another product that I almost feel like I'm cheating by throwing this into my September favorites because I just got it and I just used it today for the first time ever, but I already know it's going to be a favorite. I fell in love instantly. This is the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics Palette. So 
I love the Naked palettes. I have every single one of them. I have the two mini basics palettes. And when they like announced that they were coming out with this, I died. Like I was like, give me that palette ASAP. So here's what it looks like. First of all, the mirror is a really high quality mirror. It's huge. So you could definitely do your makeup with just that. And then you get, how many colors is there? Six, so 12. 12 different matte colors. Actually, I will say I used this color right here. Well, there's a brush in there too that just fell out and it's not quite matte there's like a little bit of a sheen to it but I mean for the most part 12 matte colors these are so versatile you can use these as crease colors you can use these with a little bit of shimmer like I did today I put the liquid moon dust on top of it today I use pretty much this whole row right here to create the eye look that I'm wearing today and they're so smooth and they're so like they feel like they're finely milled and they kind of like melt together and they blend into your eyelids so well. They blend together so well. I don't feel like they were chalky or patchy and I just, Urban Decay eyeshadows are amazing and the color selection is great you guys. I mean there are some colors that are very similar like these two are pretty similar in color. But for the most part, like these pinky purples, I die for these colors. I have brown eyes, so anything that's like pinky or purple, like dusty mauve, I just, I die for those eyeshadow colors. And then up here you have these really pretty like kind of burnt orange, like warm colors. I feel like you can get so many eye looks out of this. You have your black, you have your matte like pastel color for highlighting, and I love it so much. Extra bitter. This one right here, I haven't even... <sighs> Are you kidding me? What about this one? You guys, those are so pigmented. Look at that. Holy cow. I used these right here, so Instinct. Look at how pigmented that's Instinct right there. They're just, you have to pick up this palette. And in fact, this palette will be included in my 20 hey giveaway. I bought two of these palettes, one for me, one for you. So stay tuned for that, um, but yeah. Another makeup product that I am not wearing on my face today, but that is because, well, I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> so this product I've been loving so much. This is the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush in the color Risqué. So this is part of their Naughty Nudes collection. I bought every single one of them because I'm obsessed. And I kind of put this one to the side at first because when I looked at it, like it's, it's the least pigmented kind of most beigey peachy of all the naughty nudes collection and it wasn't my favorite at first I'll be honest and then I was watching I think it was Casey Holmes favorites video and she talked about this saying how much she loved it and I was like I have that I'm gonna bust it out and I'm gonna use it and I've used it every single day to work on the weekends it's just so pretty it's buildable and although the color is not very appealing in the pan you can build it up and something about it just like it it's very fall appropriate and it looks very natural and effortless and I really love it it's a matte formula so it's not like shimmery it's not gonna leave glitter all over your face and the reason why I'm not wearing it today is actually because I did a first impressions on the Tarte color wheel so I'm using some of those colors on my face today but in case you're wondering so yeah you can tell I've been using it to death because the design on the blush itself is pretty much gone so if that says anything next up another product that I did a first impressions on this is a brush though so it's not a makeup product this is the Artiste Oval 8 foundation brush and if you haven't seen my first impressions video I'm gonna link it down below so you can see because I had zero hope for this brush because it is super expensive it's $65 and it just it doesn't look like it's gonna do anything it looks like an oversized toothbrush it looks weird I just I I didn't have very high hopes for it I'll be honest but as it turns out it is an amazing foundation brush like I get the hype I see why everybody loves it it is worth the $65 to me it is just one of the most easy to use foundation brushes ever the fact that it's like the ergonomic design where the brushes face this way as opposed to like this you know what I mean so comparing it to this which is what I use for foundation otherwise like you have to go like this which isn't a big deal right let's get real but just it's so easy to apply it's so big that it just like buffs out your foundation so quickly like it is almost quicker than the beauty blender it is absolutely amazing the one downside is you can't really use it for under eyes because it's so big so that's the downside but 
been loving this. Two more non-makeup products. So the first one is the Lush Odafix. I think that's how you say it. Fresh face mask. So these you actually have to keep in the refrigerator. So I pulled it out of the refrigerator for this video. But this is by Lush Cosmetics. It's a face mask and they're fresh. So they're made out of fresh ingredients. There's no preservatives in it. So you have to keep it in the refrigerator, which is a little bit inconvenient for me. But this particular one, Odafix, has... Let's see, there's a blend of bananas, vanilla, ground almonds, and oats. And you guys, it smells like, mm, it smells like banana bread. Like, you know when you make banana nut bread? It smells legit like that. And you put it on your face, and it looks like you have banana nut bread batter all over your face. Like, I really want to eat this. I wonder if it's edible. Like, if they're, like, it's something like I, I really want to stick my finger in and eat it. <laughs> I haven't yet. I kind of want to. But aside from it smelling amazing, um, I feel like it really does hydrate and nourish my face. It's that time of the year where the seasons are changing and although it's not a huge change in temperature yet, my skin can tell right away and I'm getting like dry patches like my forehead is a little bit dry right now and I'm getting a little bit of dryness on my cheeks which always happens every year every time the seasons change that happens to me and this is kind of restoring the moisture and the nutrients into my skin and I just feel like it feels so much better I use this today um, before I put my makeup on actually before I hopped in the shower so in the shower I washed it off and I really, really like it. If you guys have a Lush near you, um, definitely check this out. You can't order it online because it is a fresh face mask and it has to stay cool, so that's the downside, but love it. Lastly, I have a product that I don't usually talk about. I don't usually talk about shampoos and conditioners with you guys because I'm kind of boring and I kind of go back to the same shampoo and conditioner over and over again. And there really isn't anything that stands out enough to me to be like, I need to talk about that in my favorites. But this does, this did stand out to me. So this is the Matrix Oil Wonders Volume Rose Shampoo and Conditioner. It's a whole line, it's a fairly new line by Matrix. They also have a hairspray, which I just recently bought at Ulta. Actually, I bought it yesterday, it's right there. But this stuff smells like rose. It has a rose scent to it, and if you're anything like me, you love rose scent. I know some people don't like rose, they think it smells like old lady. But I love rose scent, and this has like a very kind of natural rose scent to it. Yeah, oh my gosh, it smells so good. And it says it's for fine hair, but I think anybody can wear it, to be honest. And that scent like lingers in your hair. Like, I only wash my hair once every six days. And on the sixth day, I can still smell it in my hair. That's how strong the scent is, and I just I love it so much. On top of that, it's a Matrix product, so you get that like enrichment and that nourishment it leaves your hair really soft and smooth I don't have a whole lot of flyaways after I use it and I love the scent all right last thing I want to talk to you guys about is some books that I've been reading throughout the month and last month I talked about the books that I read in August and I got a lot of positive feedback you guys really liked that so I've also been thinking about starting like a book series on my channel where I do like a like you know how Elle Fowler used to do her what was it Literature, I think is what she called it, where anytime she finished a book, she would sit down and like talk to you guys about it and tell her her thoughts. Like, I've, I've kind of been wanting to do that because I've become really passionate about reading and I just, every time I finish a book, I want to talk to the world about it. So let me know if you'd be interested in that, if you would listen to me talk about a book for 10, 15 minutes. Um, but I did finish two books this month. So the first book I finished, actually, no, I finished three books this month. Gosh, I've gone through a lot of books. So the first one is Before I Fall, and this I was actually reading because it was part of a book club that I'm part of, and it's about a teenage girl who dies. She dies right at the start of the book, and then she relives that day over and over and over again. So it has like a Groundhog Day feeling to it, and she tries to change things in the day to, you know, change the, the end result, make it so she doesn't die. And I just, it was... <sighs> It's a teen read, so of course it's about a teenager. She's in high school. I think she's a senior in high school. So it's a little bit unrelatable, but I do think that there's some good lessons learned. Um, you learn about the importance of your interactions with people and the domino effect of what something can do and like your interactions and stuff you say. And you know, it's, so it, it kind of makes you think about the little things day to day. So I really enjoyed that one. The second book, 
I fell in love with this book, you guys. It's called Me Before You, and when I started reading it, I had no idea that there was a movie about it, and there is a movie about it. I watched the movie also, and the movie follows the book to a T, you guys. Like, the littlest things the movie captures, and it's just crazy. Like, there's a scene, so actually, let me back up and tell you what the book is about. So it's about a quadriplegic man. He's 35, I think, or he's in his 30s. Um, he used to be this, like, adventurous guy who would go on all these adventures, skiing, skydiving, like, very outdoorsy, and he gets in a motorbike accident, and he becomes a quadriplegic, which means you're paralyzed from your neck down. And then, um, he needs a caretaker, so someone comes along to take care of him. Her name is... Oh my gosh, what is her name? I can't think of her name anymore. Oh, Lou. <laughs> Louisa. Um, she's 26 in the book, and she comes to be his caretaker. She takes care of him. She kind of brings life back to him because he starts out as, like, this grouchy, like, I hate the world. And she just... It's... It's a really cute book, you guys. Um, it's very sad, but it's very, very good. Um, but the movie follows the book so stinking closely, so if you don't like books, then you can read the watch the movie, and it's pretty much exactly the same. They leave out some small things, like in the book he has a sister, in the movie he doesn't have a sister. So like little things like that, but for the most part it's to a T. Down to the point where there's a scene in the movie where they're at like a concert, and he has like a tag on his shirt that's itching his neck and she like she rips it off with her teeth like that's in the book and usually movies don't capture those small little things so <laughs> it's really good it's really sad but it's really good and the last book that I read this month is The Girl on the Train I keep looking down if you're wondering because I'm looking at my audible so The Girl on the Train so this was something my sister told me to read it's been on my wish list or like to read list for a really long time and my sister told me to read it because the movie is coming out in October. It actually comes out like October 7th, I think. So I wanted to read the book before the movie came out so I could go see the movie because I love doing that. I love reading the book and then watching the movie and seeing like the similarities and the differences. So The Girl on the Train is a mystery. It's like a murder mystery and it's about this girl who gets drunk all the time and blacks out because she drinks so much. So there's like parts of her life that she just completely forgets because she was drunk and she drank too much and she witnesses a murder um, or she thinks she witnesses a murder but she was drunk so she doesn't really know what happened and she has to kind of remember and relive that day and kind of go back and on top of that she's just recently got divorced and so it's it's just it's actually sad in the aspect of like people might actually live like that which is really sad but it's kind of like a edge of your seat like thriller you want to know who killed the, the girl and what's gonna happen and is, is she ever gonna remember and so it's a good book I mean it's not my favorite book I'm not gonna say it was my favorite book ever but I'm curious to watch the movie and see how the movie is all right guys well that is everything that I loved in the month of September I cannot believe September is over can you guys believe that the holidays are gonna be here before you even realize it now I have to hop off and film my Sephora play unboxing and my beauty con fall unboxing so stay tuned for those two videos if you like unboxings they're coming up right after this and um, yeah let me know what you loved in the month of September so I can check it out and that's it thanks for watching guys I'll talk to you next time bye